Aloha! Uh, welcome to a new channel I'm trying to start up, um, Shade Tree Aviation. I call it Shade Tree because I am by no means a professional pilot. I am not a private pilot. I just love flight simming in general. I've been flight simming for roughly, I, I'm going to guess, 20 years. And I've had all sorts of setups along the way. This is probably the, the best setup I've ever had. Uh, it's definitely the most realistic with everything. Now, and I say realistic not in that it looks real, but the controls themselves look real. Uh, and this video is going to be just an intro, not, not the whole sim. I will do other videos that walk you through each individual part of the sim. But for right now, just uh, as a quick overview, you can see I have three 55-inch monitors. Uh, this one is about six years old. It was one of the first 4K ones out there, and it's worked great. It's by Sony. It's, it still works great today. These two are new. They're from Vizio, and they're the low end. They're the $300, 55-inch TVs, the 4Ks, and they look great. Um, now, I, I am running a, uh, an NVIDIA 3080 Ti, so it does take quite a bit of video oomph to drive the three main displays plus other monitors, which I am driving multiple monitors, six monitors right now. So that's one of the things, if you get into this, you're gonna have to invest in a video card. Um, but right now we're just, uh, we're on a flight plan here. Uh, we're flying from New Haven to Syracuse, New York. Uh, two touch screens. One I picked up on eBay, the other I picked up on Amazon. I paid a hundred bucks for each. They're a little different, but they look the same. They both have uh, touchscreen capability, and I'm using uh, Air Manager. That's how I got the all my controls to show up. Now, I have a DIY Knobster setup that I just haven't programmed yet, but I built it myself. So when these get put into a panel, I'm going to get the Knobster uh, programmed and, and implemented in this as well. Here, I've got uh, SciTech FIP gauges that I have had forever. Occasionally my, my monitors will kind of go away and come back. You saw they came back. Um, I've had these FIP gauges forever. Uh, at least three to four years and I figured I could use them again. Now when I get this all set up I've got three new pieces on the way and I already have one of those pieces. I have the comm panel coming in. I have a transponder, an autopilot, and a radio panel from PropWash Sim on the way. This guy here is going to move down, and if you look on here, you can kind of see that. You can actually use this to select your fuel gauges. Now, on a real Cessna, that's that's like right down here. It's on the floor kind of, but here it gives me that option so I can have that control. And these two are probably going to just leave. I'm probably just not going to use them. Um, I may not use this as well, but that was a fun thing to build. That's a, uh, a multifunction panel. And of course, I have the Alpha and the Bravo here, and off to the side of me, I'm using uh, software. Uh, was it flight? Yeah, Flight Plan. Yeah, Flight Plan Go, I believe it is. This is awesome software, and it is free. Uh, in this hobby, you can get sucked into paying for resources that normally only a pilot would want, uh, like Garmin or um, th there's there's very expensive software for electronic flight bags out there. And I'm not a real pilot. I, there's no reason, unless I decide to get more into aviation, which I may, for me to pay a subscription fee of, you know, 10, 12 bucks a month when I'm not a real pilot. So for me, uh, Flight Plan Go um, was the right solution because, it, again, it's free. You can build a flight plan. You can fly the flight plan. It's tied into the sim now for GPS. It's an awesome piece of software for dirt cheap. Um, I say dirt cheap equals free. And it's running on an old iPad. This is a very, very old iPad. Um, so, works great. Um, and, oh, and of course I have my rudder pedals down there. They're side tech rudder pedals. But uh, yeah, that's just kind of a quick overview of the cockpit. Um, there's more to it, and as the room around it gets cleaned up, because this whole room was kind of trashed when I built this, 
just to get this up and running. So I, I do need to do my due diligence and clean out the rest of the room. Um, and in a the next iteration of this cockpit, because yes, there is already a next iteration, I'm putting a uh, more realistic facade on the front, but I'm also going to make it so I can pop off the Alpha here and pop off the Bravo. And I've built a, uh, a throttle quadrant assembly that's going to go here. That's going to be more representative of the RV-14. I've got two Logitech joysticks that are just uh, joysticks because the RV-14 is a single stick. And I'm building a, uh, a rocker panel, switch panel, for turning on the master, the avionics, all the major uh, systems in the aircraft. And it's going to go right there. So it'll... It should be able to look and act a little bit more like the RV-14 when I want. Because um, that's a really fun plane in Microsoft Flight Simulator to fly. Um, so as I as I put that option together, I'll, I'll definitely capture that on here. Now one of the things, while I love flight simming, I don't want to stay dedicated to one aircraft. I love flying all sorts of different planes. So I want to make it so that I can change this on the fly. Uh, and when I mentioned taking the Bravo and the Alpha, the Bravo is only held on with the clamps that normally came with it. The Alpha is held on because I took a, a piece of metal, cut it to length, tapped holes in it, and it's hanging there. So this comes off by just undoing two nuts, and this comes off by just loosening these, and I can put whatever I want in there. So it's just a quick overview. I'll... I'll do more videos that get into uh, software choices, um, setups, and everything else as I go along. But I just wanted to throw this out there to see if anybody's interested. You know, throw some comments down below, please. Um, I, I definitely would like to get some constructive input on the setup. If, if you have anything, please, you know, throw it out there. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks for watching.